And hello, wine drinking people. Today is Monday, Tuesday, February 5th, 6th, whatever it is, man. This is what I drank yesterday. And, you know, we try to get to these the next day, but, uh, you know, sometimes it takes a week or two to get them out, production and things. But this is actually the day following we're filming this event because this Moosini tasting I have been looking forward to for the last several months. Moosini, one of the greatest Grand Cru's of the Cote de Nuit. Only 3,000 cases of red Moosini produced in any given vintage. This wine is incredibly rare, very hard to find, especially the old examples that we had on the table this evening. And we did have some other wines from the Chambol Moosini village. Of course, Grand Cru Bon Mars. Moosini located at the very south end of the village, right next to Clos And then uh, on the north end of the village is Bon Mar. And uh, some fabulous wines from this village. One of my favorite village wines because of its elegance and finesse. Not a very dark wine in color, but uh, has a lot of nuance on the finish. And we started off tonight with an Old Dog 1964 from Pierre Oliver. This was a Bon Mar, and uh, these all came from the cellar of Dr. Bob Malner. So, you know, this wine had special meaning for him. This was the vintage that turned him on to wine several decades ago. The Charm, Charm Chambertin from this producer, which you won't find much about Pierre Oliver out there in the news today, in the wine news, because this negotiant really doesn't exist the same way they used to. That This used to be one of the Indiana Jones kind of hunters in Burgundy, of these great small uh, uh, estates. And this gentleman used to bottle wine and uh, was very well known for finding great stuff by Frank Shoemaker, one of the great... Um, importers of that day and this wine had a lovely amount of that mushroom and surbois showing on the nose at first and hardly any fruit coming out of it really needed a few minutes to open up but uh, this wine opened up all night by the way it wasn't just here and you know, flash in the pan open and close and gone in a few moments at the end of the night several hours later this wine was still drinking beautifully and uh, just layers of spice sweet cherry fruit coming out of this all evening long an incredible wine lovely finish on this still quite young and like a I said just had this lovely succulent fruit by the end of the night. Most excellent juice here. The George Comte de Vogue, probably the most famous producer and the largest landholder of the Grand Cru Moussigny, uh, the 76. Not a great vintage, but you know, great producer's wines will last uh, decades, even in a vintage like 76. This wine had a lot of mushroomy and underbrush noses, notes on the nose, and uh, not a lot of fruit in this wine at first, but man, you had this wine with the tuna that Tony did with the cardamom and coriander, that little bit of spice really helped to bring out the fruit in this wine, and uh, really nice with a sous vide duck breast also with that red cherry sauce. Uh, really still, still lovely freshness at the end, but the wine needed a little help to bring the fruit out. Excellent juice nonetheless. The Domaine Jacques Prieur 1978, a legendary vintage in Burgundy. This wine had a little lemon citrus kind of notes on the nose with some cola, exotic spice. Really lovely nuance showing on the nose here and uh, still very much alive on the palate. Lovely silky velvety texture showing this tangy acidity and uh, really lovely depth uh, and exotic spice on the finish. Killer juice. One of the wines of the night, the 78 Moussigny from Domaine Jacques Prieur. All right, the 88 Freddy Mounieré um, Moussigny. This wine, 88, a vintage that's still somewhat austere. I don't know if these wines are ever going to, you know, shed that tannic backbone that they have, but some nice raspberry coulis fruit showing, some toffee notes, uh, some fresh earth here on the nose, and like I said, still a bit austere on the palate, but uh, yeah, it's still very well built. You wonder if 20 years from now, this wine's going to be like this 64 and have some lovely sweet fruit showing through. Through. All right, the 1990, a legendary vintage. We had Georges Comte de Vogue Moussigny. We had Louis Jadot Moussigny and Bon Mar from Jadot. An excellent showing. 90, one of the great vintages and really drinking at or near its peak right now. Although these wines need a little time to open up and the Georges Comte de Vogue Moussigny taking my vote. Well, I don't know. It's evenly matched between the two Moussignys, Jadot and uh, Bon Mars. I mean, the Comte de Vogue wines just seem to have a little extra layer of fruit in these wines and a lovely texture on both of these wines. Lovely, silky, satin-like feel on the tongue and uh, just both of them continue to open up the whole entire evening. You know, I opened these wines like an hour before. Probably should have opened them several hours before because uh, they'd probably still be good this morning. All right, well, the uh, Bon Mars was very good also. A light smoke and meaty note with that to that exotic spice and lovely depth of flavors here and concentration. Most excellent. Just finished a tad behind the two Moussinis, and then the 99 vintage wines, oh, I'm sorry, the 95 Comte de Vogue Moussigny, a bit of a green herbal note to this wine, to the oriental spice and some barnyard aromas coming out, a very classic vintage in Burgundy, wine still a bit tight, 
and a little smoke and that exotic spice showing up on the finish. A lovely savory quality to this wine. And then the 99s, these two 99s, uh, you know, both awesome. But, you know, again, the George Comte de Vogue kind of edged out the Mounieray wine. For my taste, uh, the... Uh, Comp de Vogue wine, just a little bit more densely patched and packed and a little bit richer. This red maraschino cherry-like fruit in this wine on the nose, a slight hint of raw meat and this clay-like minerality and lovely uh, structure on the palate. 99, still young. These wines have got a long way to go. The Freddie Mounieray wine had this hint of cola and exotic spice, this red cherry and red strawberry fruit, a little bit tightly wound on the palate, a little bit more funk on the nose to this wine as well. But uh, a lovely amount of freshness and still a high tannic backbone. Some killer juice. I don't know how many. One, two, three, four, five killer wines on this evening. Uh, outstanding lineup. Thanks to those, to those of you that attended. And a lot of other great once-in-a-lifetime stuff coming up later this month. I'm your host, Andrew Lampassoni, signing off for the Wine Watch, saying remember, always drink the good stuff.